I've got a fun die to share with you today. It is this heart pain cover plate, and I had so much fun making this card. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. This die is so fun, and it's the first cover plate design I've ever created for Simon Says Stamp, so I'm excited to share this card project with you today, so stick around. It's coming up next. Here are a look at the products I'll be using today. Now this is a little ambitious for me. I've got a lot of things planned and I hope it works out. I'm going to use my CZ Design Heart Paints cover plate. I'm going to use this new Swoopy Love You die. I'm going to take a critter from this Wild Love set and I pulled a little Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock, the Distress cardstock, my water pen, and a few ink cubes. Now I have not done the whole smush and paint in a while and that is what I'm going to do to create a pretty colorful background panel for my project and then my critter is going to be very simple just in black and white with the greeting. I don't know how it's going to come together but let's get started. All I'm going to do is the old smush right and then create a blend of colors and I wanted them to stay on the warmer side of the rainbow so we're starting out with lumberjack plaid. Now I have a small cube from a past Simon Says Stamp card kit but currently this is only available as a standalone in the full size distress pad just so you know but any red will work you just want to you know you want to do the rainbow and I'm using my new glass mat for picking up the color and painting. And actually, I'm going to put just little corner marks here so that I know where to stay in bounds, right? Now I could have used a panel that was, oh, that's a little low, oh, that's gonna be fine, that was card sized, that was four and a half by four, five, or wait, four and a quarter by five and a half, but I don't like to do that when I'm doing something like this because I want to have a little more play time. I want to have a little more freedom for painting. So here we go uh, with the water brush. Oh, I do need to have a paper towel here. Hold on. That's just for cleaning off my brush. All I'm going to do is just squeeze out till the water starts to run, right? And pick up the color and paint. And just put it on this paper. Now the idea, of course, is messy. This is a great way to get into painting for people who might be a bit like me, and you are not an expert in painting, but you figure, you know what, I want to add color, and you can, you can do it, right? You don't have to be really talented, <laughs> trust me, as they say, ask me how I know. Now to clean off the brush, you just squeeze until the water runs clean. I can leave that there, but I think for now, I am gonna wipe this away because I think I'm done with that color. And I love how easily that just wipes up. Now I'm gonna go in with Festive Berries, okay? Just smush. It's actually a pretty similar color, but let me see. If, oh no, you can see it has more orange in it. So we're gonna bring in that again, squeezing the water and adding the color like that. Maybe a little more. Just a basic blend of color. And if you want to deepen it, right, you just squish again, pick it up, squeeze less water, and just bring that in like that. All right. I think that's good though. I think we have enough in there. All right. So this is a really easy thing that anyone can do. This is picked raspberry, by the way. I think some of my colors need a little re-inking. And I haven't done this in a while, um, but I really do love the look of the Distress inks added this way. But any dye inks that you have, you can use. You can do this with oxides as well, uh, Distress Oxides. It'll give you a slightly different look, but that's okay. Just plan with color. I think I'll add a little more pink. So yes, any ink pads you have, smush them down on a slick surface and just go to town. Now, because this is gonna be more in the center, I might make this pink band a little bigger because of course, our heart is gonna be taken out of the center. So maybe just a tiny bit more. And we'll just deepen that a little. My sleeves are in the way. 
everything's slippery on a glass surface. But I really, I really am loving this mat. I also have some cute little magnets. I bought the white ones now that will work with this. They don't hold it perfectly tight to your project, but it is nice to have that magnetic option. So I could put that there. I could put that there and it holds it, but it still will slide a little, but they're still kind of cute for basic magnetic purposes. All right. I also have a discount code now with Glassboard Studio and you can save 20% if you are interested in getting one of these. And I have the link below. I have used both the black one and this one. And I actually like them both, but for me, the white is a little easier to work on. All right, this is spiced marmalade. So we're bringing in an orange. Painting that down. Oh, I love that overlap, actually. Look at how pretty that is. Love that overlap look. Hmm, interesting. You could also do painting like this with Distress Reinkers if you have the reinkers. I, I have about I don't know ten to twelve reinkers, and I never think to pull them out, but they're definitely cool. And uh, maybe one of these days I will. But here we're just gonna go like this. Get that in there, like that. Now I pulled Wild Honey. I don't know, let me see what this looks like on the mat. Actually, that that's so similar to, uh, to Spice Marmalade. Let me grab a, a different yellow. I'm gonna try Mustard Seed here and just see. It's just a little brighter and I don't know. I might go back to the Wild Honey, but let's squeeze a little water, right? Pick that up and just bring that in. Mustard Seed is so bright and bold. Now I don't want to have greens in here. I really wanted to keep this just warm. So who knows, maybe I need to repeat the whole rainbow and just work my way back out. I could, and actually that could be really pretty, right? If I, well, I'm gonna put down a little more spice marmalade, okay? And bring that in here like that. I think I'll just push it down a little. Very pretty. You just kind of play until it looks good. Let's grab some of that wild honey. Just make a melange, just make a melange. All right. Do I wanna add a little more here? You know what? I feel like I'm just gonna come backwards here a little, pick up some of this pink, water it down quite a bit, and come in from the bottom like this. That way, I'm gonna have a whole different kind of feel and sometimes when you're doing this, just play, right? Just give it a play to fill it out. Well, that's kind of nice. And I could come back. This uh, Festive Berries is really pretty. So let's drop a little more in. And the more water you add, the lighter it's going to get, right? So just come in. I think that's pretty, a little different. And if you wanted to go back in and add any sort of swoop de doos or whatever, totally up to you. But now I'm gonna squeeze this out to clean it. Meaning you can add a few stripes of heavier color if that's your thing. I am not going to have that be my thing. So set that aside and let's just wipe this up. Now something I don't do very often and I probably should do more of is just flick on some flicks of water. So let's try it. Let's grab my, uh, I just keep my water in here. I actually upgraded, I had an old one that had turned completely yellow. So I think what I'll do is I'll just put a little water in here and just flick some on, just flick it. I don't even, I don't even well it is showing up. We'll just put a few. And then put that down and lift. So we get a little water reaction there, but nothing, nothing too wild, right? And now I'm going to let this dry before I move on 
to the die cut, which is going to cut this beautiful, these beautiful pieces out of this panel. And then I'm going to be using that to create my panel. Now, while that's drying, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and stamp a critter so my critter can be, uh, how do you say, in waiting for the project. Actually, you know what I could do? I could take my new uh, wow heat tool and I could put it on the lower setting and just maybe hit this with the with the heat to let it dry. Let me try that. The nice thing is too, I can heat right on this glass surface and nothing's going to warp. Oh yeah, that's a very nice level of heat. Wow, okay. Well, that's kind of neat. This is new. This is a new tool to me. And I, I uh, oh, that's great. All right, I'm gonna set that aside still and I will go ahead and stamp a critter. I want to have one critter kind of popping out of my heart. Now I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do this yet, but I, I think this will be cute. And I actually think maybe having the kitty, because what I plan to do is cut this off at an angle, although I want, I want the heart to show more, right? So I don't want it to be too obscured. And I think I'll do the fox <laughs> because, well, but if I did the cat, I could do that in the coordinating colors, but this could also be a little orangey fox. So let's do the fox. Well, we could do both. Why don't I do both? Because I just remembered, I'm not coloring these. I'm not coloring these friends at all. So I'm going to do two of them. Let's pick this up, make sure we have room for the dies, and we'll go ahead and stamp this. And I'll just go ahead and prime this a bit. First time stamping. Get that coating off. And this is Gina K Designs Onyx Black. Black Onyx. And our critters are just going to be one color. I did a video with this set and I'll be sure to pop up a little card up here showing another option for just keeping your little friends in black and white for a nice stark graphic look. That actually looks really good. Just do a light tap on here. I think these are great and like that. Super cute. I'll get these cleaned up and then I'll get my coordinating dies so I can cut these out. Getting these dies in place. These are pretty easy to cut out. I design my dies to have a slightly more generous outline because that's just how I enjoy them. So I will grab my cutting plates here. And these are just Gemini uh, Junior plates and these are the double-sided die plates that I tape onto the clear plate. Okay, so it's, it's a sandwich that I love and we'll go ahead and run these through the die cut machine. Put that over there and cut. Now I have choices, but also I have another little critter cut out if I want to have it. So I think those are very cute. So now let me grab my painted panel so we can cut that out. Now this is still a little warpy, but what I'm hoping is that it will be not as warpy once we get going. Now here's what I wonder. I wonder if I should switch this a little so it's lighter into darker because I think that's kind of a cool look. And here's what I'm going to do. We're just gonna frame it out within the confines, right? So we can see we have these beautiful patterns and we're gonna tape this into place so it doesn't shift. Just using a little bit of my pink Easy C tape. All right, there we go. I'm gonna put it a little bit at an angle on my plate because that goes through the die cut machine a little bit more nicely and pop it on here and then I'll flip this over because I do flip my plates each time just to minimize the warping and it actually really seems to help. So let's see how this cuts. 
Back to the table cam and I have a feeling, yeah, that looks great. So what I'm going to do though, and actually let me do it this way. Let's flip it over like this. I am going to get some press and seal, I think, and I'm going to try <laughs> to do something I haven't done in a while, which is the old pop-up, the old pop it up and see if we can make magic on a, on a note card. So let me get some supplies that I need. I just realized something. I don't think I'm going to even need press and seal. Here's what we're going to do. Now wish me luck. I am going to score this right at five and a half. Okay. So we have our, oh gosh, I'm just my, I'm having a terrible time with this score tool lately. I ordered a new one. It is coming no matter what I do. If I pull it down, if I go in, it's just, it's just not wanting to cooperate, but I see the score line. It's there. We believe. Okay. What I'm going to do is try to, and this is where I will use my magnets because my magnets will actually help me. I think to see, well, you know what we could do too. This is another way to help me see. I'm not going to fold the card yet, which is, which is rare for me. I normally do, but right now I'm just going to put a little line on the score. Still going to hold it in place with magnets that way. I mean, that's not perfectly straight though, but I think that will be okay for the visual. You know what? <laughs> no, it won't. As, <laughs> as soon as I start to try to do something that I don't normally do, I'm going to save this. Hold on. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do. I got it. We're folding. You know, I thought, thought I could try something different. Not going to do that today. All right. There we go. Nice card base. Now I have a ginormous piece of tape. I'm going to cut some of it. I'm going to save that off to the side. Come here now. And we will tape this closed. Because I want to make sure that I did a good cut and a good score. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to take this off. I would like to keep as many of the pieces intact as possible, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's going to be very easy to piece together. What we want to do is we want to transfer this design onto here. And honestly, at first I thought, well, oh, did they cut all the way through? I think they did. Oh, no, they didn't. Wait, wait. Come on now. Come on. Come on out. Come on. There you go. Okay, now it's all, it's all going to hell in a handbasket. Um, I think I did mess up the outside, but not the inside. Oh my gosh. So see, sometimes, let's get you out. Things don't always work and that's okay. We're going to make this work to the best of our ability. Okay. Could have used a shim on this. We're just going to wiggle it out. I was not expecting that. Okay. I need an X-Acto knife or some type of blade. There we go. Okay. Well, friends, sometimes you gotta, you gotta know when to fold them, know when to hold them, know when to walk away, and know when something didn't cut through all the way. But I think, well, gosh, let's see. Keep going. I'm going to work this all out. If it's the last thing I do, this is the last YouTube video I'm ever going to make. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, you know what? That's where an X-Acto knife comes into play. Now I still have all the pretty pieces. So don't worry about this. They're going to, it's all going to make sense in a minute. I am going to cut myself out another set of these in white only so that I can build up dimension. You can see how there'd be no way I would be able to cut through multiple layers. So let me go ahead and cut so we can start gluing the pieces together. Now that I have doubles of each, I am going to go ahead. I'm going to save the heart because I don't think I'm using the heart. I'm just going to use dot runner to glue the colorful pieces onto the white pieces and I'll put on some more music so that we can speed through this.
So I like to do this on a piece of scratch paper so I don't get, you know, dot runner all over. But now, I mean, this might seem like a lot, but trust me, stay with me. I'm going to grab some low tack removable adhesive and I'll show you how I'm going to piece it all together. I think that every crafter should have repositionable dots. I used to use these a lot as a scrapbooker. Um, less so now, but you just want to have enough on here to hold this little friend in place. So I'm just putting a little on the edges like that. Very, very easy. And now what I can do is position my panel. Oh, you know what? Let me grab my score tool. This is always easier. Just use an edge or something and oh, <laughs> pick it up, pop it in the top and drop it down and press. Now this is going to come up, but right now it's going to serve as my guide, right? So it's going to be easy for me to place my pieces. So I actually probably should have put a little more on, but this will be fine. And what I'm going to do is uh, just loosely figure out where everything goes. Uh, I think we got that. We got that. And then it pieces together like a beautiful puzzle of joy. Okay. I haven't completely figured out Critterland yet, but that's the placement. So again, cue the music, liquid glue for this, and I'll start putting all of these pieces in. Okay, now that I have the core in place, all I need to do, and hopefully this will work, is lift up the part that is the outline, and we're going to get that up off the piece. Now, if there's a little that sticks, I think I can, I think I can figure this out. Most of it's going to come up, and I can erase anything that doesn't. Come on now, there we go. You are repositionable. So we're just working our way around. Mm -hmm. And just gently get these pieces out, okay? It looks like a hot mess. It feels like a hot mess, but I just wanna push that down there. It's going to work. Actually, I'm gonna cut some of this out of the way because I can't see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, would we, I've got tape on the back here, would we mass produce these? Oh no, but look at that. Now that's coming up better. There we go. There we go. All right. And press. And I have a little in here that I'm going to scrape out. And I will also erase a little of that adhesive inside with my adhesive eraser. Like that. Nice. It's not bad. It is not bad because now see how I have that perfect little frame here. Now I've got a little couple areas here that aren't fully glued. So I think I'm going to take just a tiny bit of liquid glue in there. Hold that down and again take the corner of my adhesive eraser and run it along the side here to get that off. Also, when mine starts to get super mucky, I just either cut it or tear it. But look at that. Isn't that fun? All right. The other thing I can do here now is I want to put a brick on this just to really press this down and get my little muck out of there. All right, moving on. In an effort to save time, I went ahead and die cut the Love You. I die cut two out of white, one out of matte gold so that I could pop that onto the shadow layer. I have strategically placed some foam squares because what I want to do is I want to have my little fox popping out of the heart like that. I 
<laughs> this is really cute. And we're not done because I'm going to put a greeting on the inside too. It's getting, well, it's getting a little out of hand, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes you got to go all in. So here's what we're going to do. I have a few foam squares on my fox and that was just to give him the same amount of loft as these. Now, one thing that I neglected to mention, the reason I glued those pieces of cardstock on, as tedious as it was, it really did speed up the dry time and helped my colorful panels to be unwarped, I guess, if you will. So now these are laying very nicely. You could do extra cardstock layers, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just envisioning the placement of Mr. Fox. I want him to be kind of in the center with his ears coming right at the points there and like that. Just floating him right there. Now, of course, you could do anything you want. You could put a heart back in. You could do a glitter heart. I mean, this was just kind of my idea to come up here and close off all the little white avenues. And I think I can do it, right? Like that. So let's take these off probably wouldn't mass produce this card, but I could save this for my hubby for Valentine's Day and uh, he would know because I could just, you know, put a QR code inside and refer him back to this video. So honey, I love you. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day. And again, I'm going to try to get this so that all the little avenues are covered so you don't see the white coming out. By avenues, I just mean like that and that. Maybe if you see a little, it's no big deal. And we have our love you greeting. It's really fun. It's, of course, it's got the shine and the metallic. Now, I'm gonna let this sit for a minute because I want that to adhere, but now I gotta add some shine. I feel like Forrest Gump sometimes when he's in the movie and he goes, well, uh, I went this far, so might as well keep going further. I am the Forrest Gump of card making. All right, let's dump in some sequins. Because definitely it's a little weighted at the bottom, so I think for sure I want to have, you know, like a couple here. Maybe, maybe a couple up here over his head. Let's get the right side there. Mm, or maybe, do I want to bridge the gap? Mind the gap? Maybe one up here, like that, I don't know. Uh, you know, just something, just something here. Maybe one here and one here. Oh, come on. And, or, no, 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 let's do it that way. You know, it's a fine line, I like to say, between clever and not as clever, but you just play, just play till it's kind of like good enough. I actually think that's cute. You know, let's do that, let's get in a little closer. My glue is getting very low and I do, I actually did just buy a replacement, uh, the bigger connect glue, which is gonna be really nice for filling. So let's add the sequins. Oh, boop. Way too much glue on that one, but that's okay. Boop. A little here. And boop, boop. And we're not done because I am gonna add a greeting to tie it in with the theme. But one thing that this cover plate die is kind of cool for also, and I thought about this, of course I took the hardest route possible, pattern paper. You get your coordinated collection of pattern paper, keep it really simple and just do a single layer inlay. That would be a really fun way to make a card because we all have so much pattern paper. I am I am speaking for, from, from experience and I thought about doing that with this card today, but then I decided, you know what? I haven't, oh, yeah. I haven't done the messy paint in a while. Oh, now I've got one stuck in there. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Let me get an, a, an acrylic block so I can stamp my greeting on the inside. I am gonna stamp, hello, Foxy, and I'm wild about you. Ah, maybe not that I'm wild about you. I think I'll just do hello, Foxy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place it down first, pick it up with my block. I always try to pick it up that way just to make sure it's on straight. And again, I'm gonna do a little bit of that to prime it. But what I would like to do here 
is practice stamping it a few times. So let me see, do I have any scraps here that I could do that on? Well, I do. I have a little piece of paper here. Because, you know, when when a stamp is brand new, right, you don't, you don't, you don't want to mess it up. And if I mess it up, I think that will be just fine. You know what? It'll be fine. But here's the thing that I think is kind of neat. Now, these magnets will help me do this. All right, we're going to open this up. Take the tape. Well, I guess I could leave the tape in there because I'm going to have it for when I take pictures. I'm going to put a magnet here and a magnet here and a magnet here, right? Far enough away. This is going to hold this in place while I stamp. And I think that is brilliant. Now, I'll practice a few times here on this little scratch. I'm just going to use again. Now, I could do this in my Misty too, but you know, sometimes, well, let's see, let's do it this way. Sometimes I like to go free range, right? I don't always have to just stamp with the Misty. And so, oh, there we go. Let's practice once, see if we get it. Also, I wanted to see what it felt like to stamp on this glass mat. Okay, that looks amazing. See, I prefer a hard surface for stamping, not a soft one. Now, I might be an outlier in that, but I have just found, for, in my experience, I do better when I have a firm surface. I wonder if that will fit on there. I, you know what? I feel like, look at how good that looks. I think that's good enough. So, here we go. I'm going to, normally I like to ink up this way, but the reason I'm doing it this way is because the stamp is so new and I want to make sure I get plenty on here, okay? And this is just a Gina K Designs comfort block. We'll just go right in the center, press, hold it, right? Let the ink transfer and lift. And I nailed it. <laughs> super, super awesome. Now, let me tell you though, it's taken me almost six years to be able to do that. So don't think it, if you can't stamp with a block that you're not, um, that you're not killing it too from a crafty standpoint, because this, that is six years in the making. Okay, and now we have a finished card project. So I do have a greeting on the inside. Love you, hello Foxy. I'm gonna tape that down again and go take some pretty pictures. I hope this card project inspires you to possibly keep it simpler than I did, but it was fun to play, so if you have, the opportunity to make a pretty background and then cut a panel out of it, you should. You can find links to all the supplies I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. I always appreciate it when you shop with my affiliate links. It helps to support my channel and I am always grateful. To see a few more card projects with a similar water painting method with distress inks, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below, and I will see you in those videos.